Sure, you may think royal Egyptians had it made in the shade, but lounging and getting carted around town and fanned by servants was only a fraction of how they spent their time. For the most part, they were insanely busy. When it came to royal duties, ancient Egyptian royals were working overtime. Luckily for them, the perks that came with the job were pretty sweet. Today, we're exploring what life was really like for an Egyptian royal. But before we time travel, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Channel. The bosses say they'll let my family go if you do. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you all, thank you. Now it's time to set sail down the Nile and dive into the everyday life of an Egyptian royal. From around 3150 to 30 BC, Egypt was ruled by kings and queens called pharaohs who, in addition to drinking wine and eating like, well, kings, spent their days overseeing the religious, economic, cultural, and political life of Egypt. For most of their waking hours, pharaohs were constantly surrounded by people. Sorry, introverts. If you were an Egyptian royal, chances are you'd never get a second to yourself. These royal entourage members consisted of hangers-on from the royal court, usually officials, family members, noble servants, and royal bodyguards. Luckily for the royals, they mostly got to pick who hung out with them, usually rewarding friends and relatives with the sweet, sweet gig. Oh, what did you think? Nepotism was a modern concept? <laughs> yeah, no. Do you ever take a bath and get dressed and think, wow, that was a lot of work. I wish a servant could have done all of that for me. Well, if you were an Egyptian royal, you'd be in luck. After rising from their beds in the morning, pharaohs would be met by servants who readied them for the day. These positions brought servants in close proximity to the pharaoh, who probably had pretty bad morning pharaoh breath. Servants would also bathe the pharaohs. Some rulers, like Hepshepsut, liked to perfume themselves with rich oils to underline their high status, which wasn't the worst idea considering they lived over a thousand years before the invention of deodorant. After bathing, an army of stylists that specialized in everything from sandals to wigs would assemble the clothing. Hmm, wouldn't you like to see that makeover montage? Ancient Egyptian royals couldn't be caught dead without the ultimate elite accessory. Wigs were a serious ordeal in ancient Egypt, so much that they even had laws that outlined who could and could not wear wigs. Legally, slaves could not wear wigs, and the more elite you were, the better the quality of your wig. Royal wigs were the most elaborate, and they sometimes included gold and silver threads. Considering how hot ancient Egypt must have been, those must have been some sweaty and stanky wigs. Wigs weren't just for the tops of royal heads. Pharaohs sometimes wore beard wigs for special events. Why did ancient pharaohs wear beard wigs? Beard wigs became a symbol of a pharaoh's power, and they were worn to show that they were living gods on earth. With great power comes great responsibility, aka back-to-back -back meetings. According to the Greek historian Diodorus, all their acts were regulated by prescriptions set forth in laws, not only their administrative acts, but also those that had to do with the way in which they spent their time from day to day, and with the food which they ate. The accuracy of this assessment is debated, however. According to Egyptologist Adolf Ehrman, Diodora's view of a highly regimented day was probably more the ideal than the reality. With all that power at their fingertips, we can't help but imagine that they'd cancel on a meeting or two. Wouldn't you? Nonetheless, pharaohs had religious and legal duties, like participating in ceremonies and exercising judgment to fulfill every day, and their routines were probably well regulated to manage the volume of tasks expected of them. That's one hell of a hieroglyph-filled day planner. Not a morning person? Well, too bad. Soon after pharaohs woke up, they were briefed on administrative matters and managed affairs with a network of officials. They usually spent their mornings receiving guests in audiences and putting out metaphorical fires. And that wasn't optional. According to Diodorus, these tasks were mandates. Imagine having an admin meeting every single morning in a world where coffee wasn't yet invented. See, being a king was hard. Limos or sports cars may not have been invented yet, but that doesn't mean pharaohs didn't travel in style. Ever heard of a sedan? No, not a four-door car, but the chair with long poles sticking out of it that allowed servants to lift it off the ground and carry you as you sat. Whenever pharaohs stepped out of the palace complex, they traveled in sedan chairs carried by servants. Sure, these ancient sedans may not seem as luxurious as a Ferrari, but they did have air conditioning in the form of royal fan bearers. A fan bearer's job could reflect a close personal relationship with the pharaoh himself, and it has been suggested that these fan bearers may have been part of the pharaoh's bodyguard. Sounds also like a good way to keep the guns toned while keeping guard. 
pharaohs weren't just kings of Egypt. They also claimed to be a divining authority, serving as the intermediary between humans and gods. Because of this magical aspect to their title, their days were occupied by a broad swath of religious duties, such as making religious appointments, ordering the building of temples, and participating in ceremonies. According to the Greek historian Diodorus, pharaohs made daily visits to the temple to become anointed and to offer a sacrifice to the gods. Sacrifices were probably symbolic and aimed to maintain order in the kingdom. Even if pharaohs were not always physically present at religious ceremonies and rituals, their statues in temples ensured that they were at least symbolically present. Did you ever wish you could skip a meeting? Just send a statue in your place. Being a member of royalty certainly had its perks. While Egyptian commoners mainly subsisted on bread, beer, vegetables, and fish, the royals enjoyed a more decadent diet. Royal banquets might include dishes like goose, bull, and fresh fruits like dates and figs. The royal court's alcohol of choice was wine, which was beyond the means of most Egyptians. Sounds like a good time to us. Wouldn't you love to chug some wine and get full of bull? While the vast majority of ancient Egyptians practiced monogamy, kings were allowed to have multiple wives, and oh boy, did they love flexing that bit of power. Male pharaohs had a great royal wife, or chief, highest ranking wife, along with a number of lesser wives and concubines and harems. Those harems, according to author Charlotte Booth, demonstrated the wealth of the king. In other words, the bigger the harem, the wealthier the pharaoh. Being a member of the harem was not all sunshine and rainbows, especially considering the pharaoh could demand appointments with a given wife every night. <laughs> Yikes. These relationships all but ensured the pharaohs generally had lots of kids. Ramses II, for example, is reputed to have fathered over 100 children by his wives and concubines. Considering his triple-digit amount of kids were in a different designated part of the palace, it's safe to say he wasn't the most hands-on father. They did, however, have access to tutors and nurses. Pharaohs might pass the time by traveling through the city and attracting large crowds of spectators along the way. Since pharaohs decided where temples would be built, they might also stop by a construction site. Though all pharaohs invested in construction projects, Ramses II in particular was a prolific builder. He used his building projects as a form of propaganda to proclaim his power. Pharaohs were both gods and real estate developers, a classic toxic power combo. Only royals could hunt big game like lions, though pharaohs sometimes allowed other elites to participate. Going on hunts wasn't a necessity. As kings, pharaohs had all the food they needed prepared for them, but it was a form of entertainment for king and court alike. And they didn't even need to have any hunting skills to do it. Sometimes a game master would pre-catch an animal for the king to dispatch. Cheating was okay if you were a pharaoh. But hunting wasn't just a way to blow off steam after a long day of pharaoh duties. Pharaohs used the royal hunt as a chance to demonstrate their strength and showcase, in scholar Peter Lacovero's words, the king's prowess in mastering the natural world. King Tutankhamun appears to have been no exception, and a scene in his burial tomb depicts the young king returning from an ostrich hunt. Pharaohs may have played up their connection to divinity, but the ancient Egyptian rulers were just as mortal as everybody else. In fact, Many of them were probably straight up unhealthy. Frequent intermarriage and incest produced shallow gene pools. King Tutankhamun, for example, probably suffered from genetic problems that gave him a limp. The royal's fatty, carb-heavy diets also took a toll. Pharaohs could be overweight, and many of them suffered from heart disease. Hatshepsut was likely diabetic and obese. These diet-related health problems were somewhat ironic, given Diodorus' claim that the royal family's whole diet was ordered with such continence that it had the appearance of having been drawn up not by a lawgiver, but by the most skilled of their physicians, with only their health in view. Or maybe the royals just had one too many cheat meals. Do you think your family has baggage? Try being an Egyptian royal. Sometimes a pharaoh's authority was challenged by members of his or her own family. In 1155 BC, Ramses III was done away with in something called the Harem Conspiracy. In this instance, one of his wives, Tai, probably orchestrated the whole debacle so that her son could rule. Hatshepsut and her successor likewise had to deal with fractious family members during their reigns. Cleopatra, the last pharaoh of Egypt, consolidated her authority by engaging in a civil conflict with her younger brother and husband in 48 BC. If they'd only tried family counseling first. 
Ancient Egyptian royals certainly lived colorful and larger-than-life existences. From packed workdays to high-octane playtime, there was never a dull moment for these wig-clad pharaohs and their surrounding entourages. What do you think of the lives of ancient Egyptian royales with cheese? Let us know in our comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our weird history.